the biggest problems that we deal with that are easily manageable is getting people to eat enough sodium and eat enough potassium. Because if you don't, there's problems. So for sodium, if you don't eat enough sodium when you're on a ketogenic diet, because you have this naturesis of fasting, the, the kidneys losing, accelerating their loss of sodium, you will become sodium depleted and that will lead to increased cortisol and cortisol stress. If you become sodium depleted, it leads to increased cortisol and cortisol stress. And if, and if it goes on a long time and you just feel crappy all the time, they'll say, well, you've got adrenal fatigue. There is no medical diagnosis of adrenal fatigue. That's sodium inadequacy. There is no adrenal fatigue. It is sodium inadequacy. And you don't wait till it happens and say, oh, we'll give them a gram of sodium or two grams today. You treat them with the sodium from day one. When we send a starter kit to the patient, we send it with their choice of a vegetarian or chicken bouillon actually one of each, because they, they taste it and find out what they want to buy. We have to give them the stuff to start with to get them to, under, to, to take it and understand that it's necessary. Is that safe? Well, there's an amazing study published in the New England Journal of Medicine 2014 by a group at McMaster University in Ontario, Canada. But they, the study was from 100,000, from 17 countries, where they did something really innovative in terms of studying sodium requirements. What this shows is the mortality curve for they measured sodium excretion as a surrogate for sodium intake. And this is the 2.3 grams that we're all told we should be eating. And you can see that the mortality risk here is 1.5 times the lowest point, which is at, between, is at between 4 and 5 grams of sodium per day. So for healthy populations across seven different countries, is between 4 and 5 grams of sodium per day. And if you eat more than that, you can see the curve as it goes out to the, the right doesn't go up very fast, but it goes up really fast if you severely restrict sodium. So sodium is absolutely necessary. The lowest risk of death, sodium intake, is between four and five grams or more. Less than this raises the risk abruptly. More than this raises the risk very slowly. We see the same kind of things with potassium. Um, and I titled this slide, The Role of Vegetables in Broth. And the reason is that if you're a pure, pure carnivore and you eat uh, 1.5 grams of protein per kilo, which is about 15% of energy intake, you're going to be at about one gram of potassium intake per day. If you eat three grams per kilo or 30%, you'll be over here. So this idea that you have to eat 30% of your protein will actually give you enough potassium to be reasonably safe. But if you're eating 1.5 grams per kilo, you have to get your potassium from somewhere else. And if you then add homemade broth to this, you can get out to a place where it's very safe. Verda Health recommends three to four grams of potassium per day. If you're eating 1.5 grams of animal protein per one kilogram of ideal body weight, that is only one gram potassium. If you're eating three grams of animal protein per one kilogram ideal weight, you're in much better shape. Need more potassium? Try non-starchy vegetables or homemade broth, or you can try desiccated animal organs, blood, bone, etc. Aided and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.